Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. We've got a train going out there. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the notification bell so you'll be notified each time we put up a new video. Thank you. Oh, if you tap on the little notification bell, we appreciate that too. In our last video, we really got the train tonight. I think it's two trains crossing. There's two sets of tracks down there. Anyway, in our last video, we were working away on Elsie the Panhead here. And we still are. And we've been just going, moving right along. I've been trying to get each little detail. And the details get pretty involved. Every time I take something apart on this thing, I find something else wrong. And I go through all my junk and try to find my uh, very best used parts. But in our last video, we hooked up this clutch pedal and it works very well. I'm really pleased with it. I'm sure Mike's going to love it. And I mentioned putting a heel rest on a suicide pedal. And I think that's real important and it's really simple. The more you think, you can overthink it and it's no big deal. The stud that the pedal pivots on sticks out and a nut and a washer goes on and it holds the pedal in place. So we put the washer on and used a coupling nut. This is a coupling nut. Now that stud is 7 16 fine and this is a half inch but it's the same nut. Uh, this is the wrong one that I bought. I grabbed one out of the bin that said 7 16 20 and it turned out to be half 20. But this is a, a 7 16 long nut is what I put on there. Then we had to find a piece that would be just the right length and just the right size. And I bring out all these spacers and all this stuff and Mike goes over and there's this thing hanging on the wall. And what it is is a wheel spacer. Uh, it's a late model wheel spacer, probably for a dresser, um, a dresser front end. It's got a one inch hole in it. And I slid it right over that nut, which it did with a little bit of slop in it, which was fine. And a 7 16 20 bolt, lock washer, and it's done. Now, I don't have an extra shoe out here right now like I did, but basically to be able to plant your, your heel on this, and operate the clutch will give you control without a heel uh, um, peg post whatever you want to call it heel rest without that it's very difficult to operate a suicide pedal like that but by having a short peg here just enough to put your heel on you can still put your foot up here under the pedal and be comfortable so that's what we've got and of course it's all adjustable Mike can adjust it for his own leg and foot and whatever kind of shoe he wants to wear. But there it is. Works well, and I'm really happy with how it came out. But I wanted to show the nut. It's called a coupling nut, and good hardware stores stock these things. <clears throat> you have to have a favorite hardware store. I also put a kickstand on, lubed it all up. This is his old stand. I put another bracket on here that I had that was a little better than his. And uh, proper spring hook here. And all that sort of thing. So that's all done. We can say, all right, we've got that done now. It may require a little adjustment, but it's done. So then I went over to the brake side. Mike had already welded up the... Uh, pivot stud on that on this bracket and uh, so that was done now the bushing on the inside of the pedal was was wobbling around every which way so he welded that up I went through all of my parts and I came up with brake linkage for it this one's a little dull but it's actually stainless steel it will polish and again I went through my parts and came up with a uh, brake light switch now before installing a used brake light switch, you get out your own meter and you hook it up and make sure 
that it works. And that one works. It's got all its stock linkage. It's kind of funny the way I did that, but I did it like that because it's a straight pull and it works really well. So I did all that. Um, what else? I've got some nuts here for this thing. That'll be really nice. They're nylock nuts. I'm not trying to make this thing all original looking or anything like that. I'm trying to use things that'll really work. And that's one of the things we did. Now, the other thing with this whole brake setup and all that is part of this, including the brake light switch, because it didn't even have one, we're trying to make it legal so this thing can be registered easily. In other words, all of the required equipment, which includes a brake light. <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, also includes a horn. So I went through all my stuff and I found a six volt horn back there. <clears throat> and there it is. Many years ago, I made a bracket for somebody. This is kind of one of the old chopper things from the day. A lot of, a lot of people used to put, put, put a horn here or they would put an ignition switch there or both. Just bolting it on the trans gives it a place to be out of the way. And on a chopper, there usually aren't a whole lot of places to put things. But I dug through my stuff and I came up with this little template that I cut maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago. Handed it to Mike and he made me a really nice horn bracket here. You can buy them. I found them in catalogs. But this one is made exactly to size. It fits on the transmission very nicely. And the horn is out of the way. And it works. In fact, he got in and rebuilt the horn. So we have a six volt horn and we have a brake light switch and I'll be able to run the wires down here and hook all this up at once. I'll run it through one sleeve. <clears throat> That's pretty much as far as we've gotten at the moment. Um, I ordered a bunch of parts today, so I just wanted to get a video up to show that we're doing it, we've got this stuff in place, and I ordered a bunch of uh, more clevis pins, I ordered a bag of those, um, I ordered a 6 volt headlight beam, and I ordered a switch. Now understand, this is an old funky pair of bars, and I don't really know what bars Mike's going to want on it. So rather than put all the effort into running the wires through the bars and putting switches in and all that sort of thing, I ordered an external switch, which it'll probably be right about here, run the wires down through the top tree and back to the ignition switch. Um, the main idea being it'll be kind of temporary, but it'll be legitimate. It'll be a high beam, low beam switch and a horn button all in one switch that clamps on the outside of the bars. I had to go through all the old catalogs just to find one. But that makes it legal and proper and safe. So we will have a brake light and tail light, high beam and low beam, horn, whatever else we need to be legal. And that'll make it nice. So that's really what we're doing. I also ordered a fitting for this carburetor that will enable me to use a, uh, a neoprene rubber type fuel line, which I think is a whole lot easier than the original steel lines, less likely to leak, and easily replaced, easy to deal with. So we'll be doing that as soon as that fitting comes in. It's going to take days to get these things that I've ordered. But that's about it. Other than that, all we've got left is wiring and a rear tire, and we'll be ready to fire this thing up. So I just wanted to explain where we're at. Um, other than that, <laughs> the starter clutch went out on my shovel head. No big deal. It's a real common thing, but I had to order one. It came in today. I do have it. And maybe we'll do a video on that because in the next couple days I want to get that on and get my road bike back up and flying. But there's a nice new starter clutch. 
So we'll be putting that on in the next couple days. We've got a big party to go to tomorrow, so it's not going to happen tomorrow. And my road bike is not going with me tomorrow. I'll just have to ride the Panhead. So I will have a great time anyway. It's a big rockabilly thing in Temecula, California. And I love rockabilly. And I guess it's a car and bike show. And we're going to go to that. So that's basically it for now. Um, we'll be back on this thing as soon as those parts come in. And I can get everything wired up and... Uh, She'll be ready to fire. So until then, I'll see you out on the road.